Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and today I would like to take you through different ways that you can navigate Chaturanga Dandasana, or in English, your four-limbed staff pose. If you take any active yoga classes often, or most often rather, your vinyasa yoga practice, you have a lot of chaturangas throughout that particular discipline. Sometimes it is sprinkled into your hatha classes, um, but more often than not your vinyasa practice. So today I would like to take you through different ways that you can progress that posture safely and carefully in your body. So if you're interested and you'd like to learn a little bit more about your chaturanga pose, then just keep watching. So you'll begin generally from a halfway lift. That's often where you would enter the posture. So as you're standing at your feet, feet about hips width distance, you would inhale, take your halfway lift, exhale, high plank, plant your hands and step your feet back. Now, first thing, you would shift forward onto the tips of the toes. So you notice that your shoulders are in front of your wrists. Option one would be to drop down to the knees, but notice you're not in a tabletop pose. The shoulders are still in front of the wrists and your hips, they dip lower than they would in a tabletop posture. From that shift forward of the hips and you're on your knees, you would exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana, lower halfway down. Notice that the shoulders are no lower than your elbows. Inhale to your upward facing dog. You lift your knees and thighs right off the mat. Exhale into downward facing dog. Lower the heels and lengthen your spine. So that right there would be option one, which is a wonderful way to build a lot of strength and stability in the upper body and the abdominal muscles. You drop down to your knees and your shoulders are slightly in front of the wrists. So that would be option one more stable, more control, a great place if you're just starting off, or a wonderful way to modify if there are a lot of vinyasas in the particular class that you're taking. So then option two would be to keep the knees lifted. Again, let's meet in a halfway lift. You inhale halfway up, hands to your shins or up to your thighs. Exhale, high plank, plant your hands, step your feet back. Inhale, shift forward. It's the same thing with the shoulders in front of the wrists. Keep the knees lifted, exhale, chaturanga, elbows in, there's no flare. Notice again that your shoulders are in line with your elbows. Inhale, upward facing dog, lift your shins, knees, and thighs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lower the heels and lengthen your spine. Already I can feel that I'm a lot more out of breath, so it is a lot more taxing on the body to keep the knees lifted and to lower down in that smooth and flat line. Often what will happen in Chaturanga, if there's resistance to dropping down to the knees, what I'll often see students do is they drop the hips and then they lower and then they're kind of in like this worm where they lower all the way down to the belly. And if you wanted to lower to the belly, that's fine, but you still want to stay engaged through your core muscles. So dropping to the knees is a wonderful way to modify as you're building up strength to keep the knees lifted and lower down smooth and in control. So option one, you had on the knees. Option two, the knees are lifted. Now let's say upward facing dog, where you go often, right from chaturanga. If that's too much, you would pass through chaturanga and lower to the belly and ribs. Inhale, halfway up, your spine is flat. Exhale, high plank, plant the hands, step your feet back. Inhale, shift forward. You can do this from the knees or with the legs lifted. Exhale, pass through chaturanga, elbows in, chin off the chest, then lower to the belly. The catch there is that the hips, the ribs, and the chest lower at the same time. Tops of your feet press down. Now here's your softer back bend. Inhale, cobra pose. All from the low back, lift the heart, lift the head. Exhale, downward facing dog. Tuck the toes and elevate the hips. So that's if you wanted to pass through your chaturanga, lower all the way down, hips, front ribs, chest, everything touches the floor at the same time. So you have from the knees, you have knees lifted, and then you have skipping the chaturanga or passing through it to lower to the belly. As you start to get more familiar with that sequence, you would take out the shift forward onto the tips of the toes. It kind of just happens a little more freely and fluidly as you get more skillful with it. So from your halfway lift, inhale halfway up, exhale chaturanga, you plant the hands, step the feet back, and then lower halfway down on the knees or with the knees lifted. Inhale, upward facing dog, or you would lower to the belly, lift into cobra, and then exhale into downward facing dog. Drop to the knees, you take your rest. 
So that's what I have for our Chaturanga Dandasana breakdown. I do hope that you found benefit from the verbal explanation as well as seeing it visually. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please be sure to leave that in the comment section below. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.